Hello, world. This is awkward. My kids usually show what life is like in Japan. However, there's a topic which they couldn't help with feeding yourself in Japan with no Japanese. Because obviously, they know Japanese. As it happens, my brother and his family came to visit us in Japan for the first time, and beyond arigato and oishi, they don't speak Japanese. So, being the exploitative younger brother that I am, I documented their experience getting fed, all the while offering little to no help. We're going to go out and try to order some food. How are you guys feeling about that? I think it's going to be okay. I, I think yeah. that I'm hoping that they understand words like chicken and noodles. But before I start showing their experiences, let me lay down some basics about getting food while out and about in Japan. The first thing to figure out is where to find food. The obvious answer would be to open your eyes, because if you're in a place like Tokyo, you'll easily find places everywhere. But not all food establishments are equally accessible, so let me walk you through some of the easier ones. The easiest by far is the Kombini, our convenience store. If you can't find a convenience store, then maybe you will starve in Japan because they're all over the place. The great thing is that they're grab and go. You don't really need to do anything but place your items on the counter and fork over your money. What can you eat there? A standard to-go food is onigiri, which are rice balls that normally have something nice on the inside and seaweed on the outside. My personal favorite is the 7-Eleven Premium Salmon one. I know, it's a fancy splurge costing 200 yen. Most onigiri are closer to 100. By the way, just think of yen as cents. So 200 yen would be approximately 200 cents or 2 US dollars, making 100 yen about 1 dollar. But you can buy much more than onigiri. You can pick up anything in the refrigerated section from sandwiches to soba noodles to chicken katsudon. If the items need to be heated, the staff can do it at the counter or sometimes there's a microwave accessible to the customer. Oh yeah, there's also plenty of hot treats at the front of the convenience store. You can get nikuma, which is meat buns, or pizza ma, which is a pizza bun, or you can get oden, which is great on a cold day. And there's also a dry section where you can pick up breads or perhaps a cup of noodles that you can fill up with the hot water that's also available in the store. You really could survive off of kombini food, but there's so much more. The next easiest choice is chain restaurants. Like kombinis, these should also be relatively easy to find. They're the most likely to have bright signs and big open windows where you can see people eating inside. And if you're really unsure, they usually have these pictures of happy people on a poster. These are actually employees wanted posters. Chains are always looking for new hires, so maybe you can also pick up a job at the same time. The majority of these places have picture menus, and many of them have some English as well. Some are renovating and now have tablets that you can use to order from your table, like this family restaurant called Oltoya. And when it's time to pay, there's an automated machine where you can do that as well. But what you're probably more likely to find is a button. So once you've looked at your picture menu and are ready to order, simply push the button and then use that same finger to point at the menu to show what you want. You can totally do this without Japanese, but if you want to speak it a bit, you could say kore onegaishimasu, which means this please. After every set of food is given to you, you'll usually receive your receipt. They're not trying to quickly kick you out, so feel free to push the button to order some more. When you're ready to go, just bring the bill up to the cashier at the front and pay up. As you probably know, there's no tipping in Japan, so I would highly recommend against it as you'll just confuse things. With most restaurants, the staff generally leave you on your own unless you request help. The staff will most likely only visit you three times. Once to take the drink order, once to give you the drinks and take your food order, and wants to give you your food and receipt. If you want additional help, don't be afraid to say sumimasen, which means excuse me, or put your hand up in the air. Now sometimes you don't receive a receipt, so in those cases, just go up to the counter to pay. And honestly, the biggest tip I can give when you don't know what to do is observe the locals and follow their lead. Let's now move on over to the shopping mall. Shopping malls are a reasonably easy place to eat, They'll have food courts where you can generally order at the counter. So easy in fact, this is the first place I sent my brother to try and get some food using his limited Japanese language skills. Can I get a pork kenchin udon? Uh, udon? Udon, yes. The big one. Yes, thank you. Alright, let's see what I get now. I think 
you're good. <laughs> now, the reason I was laughing was because usually when you have a bowl of udon, you take one or two pieces, but he just going crazy taking a, a ton of tempura, so. It's totally fine, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but it, he was saying that, yeah, I had a lot of fried food. Yeah, no wonder. It seems like my brother did all right, so I decided to see how my sister-in-law would fare. That's like, you can take that if you want. It's cold noodles, so you take a little bit like this, dip it in, I think this is how we do it, and then eat it like this. Yeah, good enough. That's like, you can take that if you want. I don't know if it's spicy, I guess we'll see. Probably. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was shichimi, our seven spices, and I explained I've only seen people put it in the dipping sauce, not on the noodles. Here's her second attempt with the spice in the sauce instead of on the noodles. I think that makes more sense. That's the way it's supposed to go. It, does, it tastes weird on um, by itself. After you finish, you clean and clear your table like your parents might have asked you to do at home. Since many places will give you real dishes, you have to return the dishes back to the restaurant you bought it from. This was filmed at Soramachi, a mall under Skytree, so obviously a massively popular tourist destination. Using only English was no issue, but even if the staff didn't understand English, with the picture menus, it would have been easy for them to point and order. Alright, I'm glad we tried that. It's a very unique See? flavor. Told you. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy. Really not that challenging at all. Department stores are also great places to eat. They are often found near busy train stations like in Shinjuku or Shibuya. In the basement of these department stores, you'll usually find a big grab and go food section where you can get all sorts of goodies, whether it be yakitori, sushi, or gift desserts for that special obligation, like the one you have to give for White Day. Anyway, most everything you'd want to buy is showcased, making the point and get method extremely easy to do. Now one area where you'll find lots of good places to eat, but that may not be apparent to visitors, is office towers and department stores. They usually have a whole floor or two dedicated to restaurants. There's a few reasons I like these places. Generally, the food is of higher quality than your family or chain restaurants found out in the streets. The majority of them also don't allow smoking, which can be tricky to find in Japan. They are used to catering to busy office people or visitors, so you'll find a lot of them have food displays or picture heavy menus. You'll also find a good variety of restaurants all within a small area, so you don't need to endlessly walk around town trying to find something that makes everyone happy. So safely ordering some tasty food is a fairly easy thing to do on these food floors. Something that I haven't done, but that I read somewhere that makes so much sense, is to take a picture of the menu item you'd like to order. That way when you go inside to order, you can simply show your waiter what you want to eat. Even if you can speak some Japanese, the menus can be hard to read, as you'd need to know a fair amount of kanji, the Chinese characters that Japanese use. That's where an app like Google Translate can help, as you can use the image function to translate the pictures. For example, these are bamboo noodles. Okay, that's not really right, because in reality, this is tan tan men, a spicy ramen noodle dish originating from China. What about this curry? First up is live ball warm ball. Not too promising. The next one, cheese curry, that's accurate. I don't know about this though, men's curry on the meadow? Prawn fried fish is close enough, so perhaps you'll have a 50-50 chance of getting what you think you're ordering. 
Luckily, this is a chain restaurant, so they have pictures and even some English to go along. No need to do Japan on native mode yet. With some places, you can simply use the ticket machine. If you're lucky, it'll have pictures or English on it. If not, it'll be a fun game. Here's my bro trying for the first time. What? <laughs> now it could be my brother was messing with me, but I truly think he was trying to put money into the light indicator instead of into the big slot underneath it. Look below you, man. <laughs> 31 is the whole thing. So how do I tell him? I want. Well, we'll see. <laughs> so he kept on taking too long and his money got spit back out at him a few times. But eventually he figured out how to push buttons within a reasonable time frame and went on to order. Alright. Just wanna go up here and give it to him? Just say sumimase. Sumimase. Hi. Pancakey. Pancakey. はい、そっちました。と、カツ定食とトンコツラーメンはどれにしましょう、これ。えっと。醤油か博多の白か赤味噌になります。ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ